morning and buenos dias. I'm glad you're here today. So we, I'm Pastor Dave Couyers, Country Bible Church in Boonville, and we're going to resume our, our quest over Ezekiel chapter 44 is where we're at today. We're finishing up the book of Ezekiel. Not today, but next time at least. And I will publish it on YouTube, and we have new subscribers, and we give you thanks and praise for that, Lord. So our background is my, the old ranch of my co-pastor, Eric. And uh, we're not going to look at all of these. We're going to look at all of these today, so I'm not going to read them. So that's some of the topics. So and I've used this outline, Outlines of the Bible Books, by David Lang and Greg Ward and Son Nelson. And the last part of it here, the last eight chapters, are all about the vision of the restored Jerusalem. Judaism restored is what's coming. Okay, it's coming faster than you might think. Today, we're going to look at chapter 44, and that includes the prince's gate and the details of the priesthood. And I'm just not going to take time to read it all. You can read it on your own. Uh, we're going to instead just pick up a few topics in it. I showed you this video before. Uh, we enjoyed it. But when we got to the prophetic part of it, they messed it up so badly that I won't replay the end of the video again. But we are down here. Okay, This is where I'm going to show you next. So this is that cutaway. Uh, it's Israel's idolatry has given God away, okay? But God has not abandoned his people Israel. That's a promise. They've been in captivity for, for about 15 or 20 years at this point. They've lost all hope. And God gives Ezekiel the revelation of what's in store for Israel yet future. So last time we looked at all of the chapters leading up to it, and they're all a restoration of Israel. We have the dry bones scenario here, and and now we're, and then last uh, couple about a month ago we did Ezekiel 38 and 39, uh, where God defeats the enemies that have come down against Israel, and now we're up to chapter 44. So we're right in the middle here, Media, uh, of the hope that God's promised Israel of a restored temple, a restored priesthood, a restored sacrifices, and, and the glorious. This is a, a rebuilding of the entire lo world. Jesus is going to come and fix the problems. He won't put an end to sin yet. And he's not going to put an end to unbelief yet. A thousand years, he's going to rule and reign on planet Earth for his glory. And I believe he does it to show that even there is no human utopia. Of, of, it's impossible, impossibly. So, but even with God sitting on the throne and ruling and reigning and the healing of river and the trees for fruit and and Jesus on the throne, there's still going to be rebellion. So, we're going to take a look. Start out on Ezekiel 44, verse 1. Then he brought me back by the way of the outer gate of the sanctuary, which faces the east. And it was shut. Okay? The east gate on the millennial temple will be shut. Verse 10, chapter 10, verse 18 when the glory of the Lord departed and the glory of the Lord of Israel hovered over them. So when God's spirit left the temple in chapter 10 of Ezekiel, it went out through the east gate and it got to the Huerta and it just hovered it's like, and waited. <laughs> and then it went out and left. And now God tells them it's going to come back. Uh, 43.1, last time we locked it. The gate facing towards the east, the glory of the Lord of God of Israel was coming from the way of the east. So this is a prediction of yet future when the Spirit of God, the, the glory of God, like, like in the 40 years in the desert, 
God's Spirit will come and dwell with them. Another big question that comes up is, who is the prince? What do we mean, what does Ezekiel mean by the prince? 44 verse trace. As for the prince, he shall sit in it as prince to eat bread before the Lord. And he shall enter by the way of the porch of the gate and shall go out by the same way. Okay, this eat bread before the Lord, that what an honor. You know? Uh, we should share a meal more often. Last time we tried, it didn't work so good, but that's all right. Uh, but to sit down and eat a meal with God, can you imagine what an honor that is? And this prince will be, you know, at his table, if you could think of it that way. King David did that a lot. He brought his enemy's son, grandson, to sit at his table. Same kind of an idea. Great honor. And he shall enter by the way of the porch of the gate and shall go out by the same way. So this prince, whoever he is, gets very special treatment. Special. So, what do we mean by the prince? In the Hebrew, it's nasi. Uh, And nasi, and it's, Ezekiel uses it almost more than anybody else. I should have checked my uh, resources. But that's how many times Ezekiel uses the word Nasi, Prince. And Strong's data, number 5387, is Nasi, or Nasi in the Hebrew. And it means one lifted up, a chief, a prince. Okay? And it's not Jesus, this prince. Okay? And back in Ezekiel 38, the evil Gog is called a Nasi. 47, 45 verse 7, the prince shall have, his, have land on either side of the holy allotment and the property of this city. So he's going to own a little piece of real estate. But more importantly, in 45, 22, on that day the prince shall provide for himself and all the people of the land a bull for a sin offering. Can you see that Cannot be Jesus, absolutely. <laughs> cannot absolutely cannot be Jesus because he provides a sin offering for himself. Jesus didn't offer any offerings when he was here. The only offering was himself. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So he didn't take in and do ritual, ritual, and he won't in the future. So this prince is not Jesus. 21 verse 25, and you, O slain, wicked one, is applied to the Nasi, the prince of Israel whose day has come. So it's not always good. It just means it's a title like saying emperor or, you know, king or president. You have good presidents and you have bad presidents. And, you know, it's just an office. Ezekiel 30 verse 13 there will no longer be a prince or a Nazi in the land of Egypt. So it can be foreigners even. 34, 24. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them or Nazi among them. And I, the Lord, have spoken. In verse uh, 37, 25, he says, David, my servant, will be their prince or Nazi forever. Now, controversy, whether it's actual David r- resurrected or whether it will be a descendant of David. Uh, Jesus said, I am the son of David. So it could be a descendant that he's talking about. Could be Solomon. Guys argue about this for end, no end. <laughs> but we don't need to argue about it. It's going to be a prince. He will have a very high position in the millennial temple. And, uh, and so on, so... And if you ever want me to send you the PowerPoint, uh, if, if you ever want me to send you the presentation, I can send you it to you as an email on a PowerPoint. Okay. So just let me know, and I'll send you the whole thing. Uh, but I encourage you to take notes and write it down in your Bible. That's why we need to open your Bibles to uh, Ezekiel 44. 
cuarenta y cuarenta y cuatro. Open your Bible so you've got them. Then you can make notes in there. Oh, and I wanted to remind you when I don't when I put up verses that don't have the SRV, this one here. When it doesn't have SRV there, or even worse, if it says NAU over here, <laughs> that means I didn't copy it out of your Spanish Bible. It's a mistake on my part. Lots of them, it's not a mistake. It's like this. I wanted the ellipsis. I wanted the notes. I wanted the underlining. I didn't get the underlining in that. And so I'll just copy that, and I'll translate it and put it on your side. But if it says SRV up here, in front of it, then I pasted it out of the Spanish Bible. So that's why I tell you, open your Bibles and look, and if you see me making mistakes, I need to fix them. So let me know if there's an error. Because I, I, I'm, my Spanish, I know, I'm not good enough to, to, do, to do right. I can barely do right in the English, so. <laughs> so, so if it no, no S there, then it's just Google Translate. So, um, so we're back to the prince is not Jesus. Verse 16 and 18. Thus says the Lord God, if the prince gives a gift out of his inheritance to any of his sons, okay, his sons, it shall belong to his sons. It is their possession by inheritance. So whoever this prince is, is going to have physical descendants, sons. And, they will, and he will have property that's his own. Jesus, it couldn't be Jesus because Jesus owns it all. Already. And he doesn't have to carve out a little piece and say, this is mine. Because <laughs> he owns in total. Uh, verse 23, they're commanded to teach diligently. I see this. Moreover, they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. The millennial kingdom will have unclean and clean both. Deuteronomy 6, 7. You shall teach them, the, and I believe it's the scriptures, diligently to your sons, and you shall talk to them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And I believe it's a commandment to the fathers. It's not a commandment to public school teachers. It's not a commandment to, to Sunday school teachers. It's not even a commandment to the mothers. It's to the padre. He can delegate that responsibility. Okay, the fathers can ask the wife to teach the children. They usually do. Or a Sunday school teacher to teach the children. But he still has the responsibility it's for the Padres. You have, you have hijos? I meant like meeting your sons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I think she's telling me you, your sons like the service and yeah, think it's good for you. Yeah. Went on. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Lord. 44, verse 24. In a dispute, they shall take their stand to judge. They shall judge it according to my ordinances. They shall also keep my laws, keep my statutes, and all my appointed feasts and sanctify my Sabbaths. So there's going to be disputes in the Millennial Kingdom that will require judges to make the decision about the dispute. And there's also going to be keeping the Sabbaths again. Okay? We'll be back under not Moses' law. This is a whole new law that's yet future that will be for all the people. 
even the Egyptians and the Gentiles and all of us, well, they're all, if they don't come and present their offerings at the appointed times, they'll get no rain in their country. So it's, it's a big deal, yet future. Okay, and I, will, I put this in here for you. Remember Ezekiel 40 and 48 is not about heaven. And it is not about the new heavens and the new earth. And it's not about eternity. This is a description of Christ's thousand year, whoops, millennial kingdom on earth. This is on earth. With physical flesh and blood people reproducing, having sex, having children, eating food, everything else on earth for a thousand years. Flesh and blood people who will live long lives, have babies, and some of the babies will not become born again. They will have, still have a sin nature. Even the, the starts with Matthew, chapter, Mateo 25, 25. In Matthew 25, the sheep and the goat judgment is where this starts. And all the sheep that, lo- that survived the, millennia, the great tribulation will walk into the millennial kingdom in the normal human bodies. They will all be faithful to the Lord. The goats will all go to judgment. So when we start out, it's all believers, we'd say. But they have children, and some of the children don't, don't yield to Jesus Christ. So we get this judgment of the, of the thousand-year millennial kingdom. Psalm 2, verse 8. Ask of me, and I will surely give you the nations, the goyim, the Gentiles, as your inheritance and the very ends of the earth as your possession. He, Jesus, right now it's under the dominion of Satan. The devil has all authority has been given to me, he told Jesus. Well, Jesus is going to come and interrupt that and bind Satan and put him in the abyss. Verse 9, you shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall shatter them like earthenware. So the nations are going to be broken. Jesus is going to come and break them, set up the millennial kingdom. All believers march into the millennial kingdom. Some of them won't be saved. And even for a thousand years, some of them will have to be judged by, I believe the church will be judges over Israel. I'm going to show you that verse. Isaiah 65. There's still going to be death in the millennial kingdom. Isaiah 65 verse 20. No longer will there be an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not live out his days. For the youth will die at the age of 100. So there will be death of people. And if you die and you're only 100 years old, they'll be thought to be accursed because you died so young. And the one who does not reach the age of 100 will be thought accursed. So there will be death during the, for a thousand years. It will be so unusual that somebody dies that they're going to think, well, he must be accursed. Must be on his way to hell. You know? Matthew 28, or 19, 28. And Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, that you who have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, that's what we're talking about in the last nine chapters of Ezekiel. That's what we're talking about. When Jesus comes into the Father's kingdom, sits on his throne, and rules the nations with a rod of iron. You also will sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So why would that happen? Why would we need to sit on 12 thrones and judge the nations of Israel? Because there are still sinners there. They have a sin nature. And they've got disputes. And they've got problems. And so we have to have judges. The good news, bueno, good news is we're going to be in a glorified state. We'll be like Jesus. We'll be righteous. You won't have a sin nature then. You can thank God that I'm not sitting on that throne now. Yeah, let me do mine too. 
Bueno. Gracias. Uh, so, so, perfect, sinless, glorified human beings will sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And I believe the Gentiles also. Isaiah 11, 44. But with righteousness, he, Jesus, will judge the poor and will decide with fairness for the afflicted of the earth. And he will strike the nation with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. So in the millennial kingdom, there's still going to be wicked who will die. The good news is, it goes right into chapter 11, verse 6. Okay, we were on, we were on verse 4 of chapter 11 of Isaiah. And now I'm stepping you over to verse 6. And the wolf and the lamb will, will dwell, and the wolf will dwell with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little boy, boy will lead them. Also the cow and the bear will graze. Their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat like straw like an ox. And the nursing child will will play by the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child will put his hand in the viper's den and not be harmed, it goes on to tell us. So this is what we're looking forward to. This is what the refixed, the restored, how do you say restored? Restoration? Uh, the restored earth is going to be this kind of peace and harmony. Uh, my, my good friend that used to come to church with us, Ellen, Asked me one day, well, what about the lion and the, and the lamb? There is no verse for the lion and the lamb. <laughs> it doesn't come in here. It's, it's the, uh, the wolf and the lamb. Yeah, and lots of others, yeah. But we kind of summarize it. So if you go looking in your Bible for the lion and the lamb, you won't find it. But anyway. So verse 9. There will be unbelievers in the millennial kingdom. Thus says the Lord God, no foreigner uncircumcised in heart. I would say that means unbelievers. If, once we get saved, once we believe in Yeshua, then we get a circumcised heart. We get a new heart. And uncircumcised in flesh. And all the foreigners who are among the sons of Israel shall enter my sanctuary. My sanctuary. Remember, I told you there's a lot of people that don't even believe this is going to be built. But here we have God calling it my sanctuary and saying that they will enter it. It will be built, yet future. It's more, más than seven años, more than seven years away. First the rapture, then seven years of great tribulation, three and a half years of great tribulation, three and a half years of tribulation, and then after that, then the sheep and goat judgment of Matteo 25. Verse 23, moreover, they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. So there's going to be holy in the millennial kingdom. There will also be profane. There will be children, little hijas and niños, grandsons and granddaughters that won't come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ even though he's sitting in Jerusalem on ruling from the throne of David for a thousand years, some of them will not believe. And at the end, they're going to go to war against the Savior. I'm going to show you that. Revelation 20, verse 7. There's war in the millennial kingdom. When the thousand years are over. So when is this going to happen? After the thousand years, right? Right? Mil años, I think, are completed. Satan will be released from prison. Yeah, there it is. Cuando los mil años fueren, fueren, completed. Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations who are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog. This is the people from the north again, the Scythians, I believe, the descendants of Gog and Magog. Uh, to gather them together for war. 
The number of them is like the sand of the seashore. And they came upon the broad plain of the earth. We believe it's the valley of, of the Mount Megiddo, which overlooks the valley of Jezreel. They're going to gather together for war. They're not going to make war. They're going to gather together for war, and God's going to wipe them out. Verse 9. And they came up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, Jerusalem, and came down from heaven and devoured them. When he comes back, Revelation 19 comes before Revelation 20. When he comes back in Revelation 19, he's going to come back with the breath of his mouth, with the sword of his word. And his enemies are going to go, namas. So, boy, I'm really, it takes me a lot longer to prepare for Spanish now, so I don't get as in-depth a study, so sorry about that. So in closing, I love this verse. And we have seen and testified, legal testimony, that the Father has sent this, his Son to be the Savior of the world. John 1, 29, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is going to put an end to sin for a little while, and then children will be born who will still be sinners. And then at the end, he's going to wipe them out. And then he will put a new heavens and new earth wherein dwells righteousness, and there'll be no more death, no more sin, no more disease, no more disasters. And not even any dandruff on your head. <laughs> God's going to make it all right for the new heavens and new earth. No more sin. No more death. No more tears. So I found this. A roadrunner's top speed is 20 miles an hour. While coyotes can reach speeds up to 43 miles an hour. My whole childhood was a big lie. <laughs> And, you know, the world we live in is a big lie. If you walk out on the street and they'll tell you, well, everything came into being from nothing. Well, that's the biggest lie there ever was. Uh, the other big lie they tell is that, well, I can get to heaven by being a good person. No, you're a filthy, rotten liar, and you're not getting to heaven that way. So there's a lot of big lies out there. But I love this one. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you guys knew the Red Runner cartoon. So, so Elephine. So, and I will publish this hopefully on uh, YouTube. So let me, let me do the escape and do the this and do a command.